What is everybody? Dan Rock's back again on our video. 1997 year in review continues with WWF Raw is War. It's the go home episode of Raw for WrestleMania 13. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the war zone. Now, I last I last uh, got off of uh, WWF talking about WWF in your house, the final four. There's uh, quite a lot of bit to talk about. The night after final four on Raw, uh, Psycho Sid defeated Bret the Hitman Hart and became the WWF champion once again. So in a matter of just like five days, it went from Shawn Michaels to vacancy to Bret Hart to Psycho Sid. In just five days, the WWF title went. I know, did they just became WCW 2000 in that remarks? But, so you have this awesome rivalry between Bret Hart and Steve Austin that's grueling, that's steaming up even hotter and hotter. And it has to have a blow off. WrestleMania is just around the corner. This is the go home show. Um, Shawn Michaels has lost his smile. What is he going to do at WrestleMania? So let's talk about it. The major storylines going in for WrestleMania 13. You got Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Goldust for the Intercontinental Title, or not for the Intercontinental Title rather. You have Rocky Maivia versus the Sultans, which is for the Intercontinental Title. You have Owen and Bulldog versus Vader and Mankind for the Tag Team Titles. You have Undertaker and Sid for the World Wrestling Federation Title. You have, of course, Steve Austin and Bret the Hitman Hart. And you have quite a lot of other matches on that show. So, how they build it up? Well, honestly, this is actually just another episode of Raw. Now, this it wasn't the first episode of Raw is War, but it was like the second episode of Raw is War. So, you have this huge new set. You have this gigantic-ass Titantron with the with the black curtains and this big ass ramp. However, for some particular reason, while well, they had the big ass Titan Tron and they have the WF War Zone and Raw is War logos and all that crap, and now it's two hours, they still have the new generation ring apron stuff, which is kind of fucking weird. I mean, there's lots of other matches, but let's talk about just a couple of the big stuff here. Hunter Hearst Townsley defeats Flash Funk in just a typical Raw one-on-one -on -one match. China gets involved, and we find up uh, who we find more about her. Nothing else to talk about here. Vader and the Bulldog, Bulldog and Owen, much more, uh, much more, much more fighting between those two. Bulldog actually, Bulldog actually takes. Owen slammy and slams it down. He's all pissed off at Owen because it's another disqualification. This is actually a decent match. Um, he have a funny ass midget. I'm sorry, I know I have a dark sense of humor. You have a midget match with mini gold dust and oh god, I forgot the other guy's name, but he was pretty fucking awesome. And they beat up mini mankind and mini Vader. There's even a spot towards the end up towards the ramp where Ah, uh, God, I forgot his name. But he jumps off of the stage onto Mini Vader, almost kills himself. Fucking great stuff. Um, but the biggest parts, and you have lots of other squash matches, like the Sultan beating up some guy. Um, Rocky Maya V on commentary. There's also Billy Gunn trying to, trying to be a tough guy with Ken Shamrock. Uh, that showcases King Shamrock that he is not the fuck with in the submission matches. He is the special referee, the special enforcer, if you will. But the biggest part of this Raw, what makes this Raw a special, a good uh, go-home episode of Raw for WrestleMania, what makes it a very special and one of the more memorable special uh, go-home uh, WrestleMania Raws is... The main event, which was Bret the Hitman Hart and Psycho Sid in a steel cage match for the World Wrestling Federation title. Right, a WF title match six days before WrestleMania 13. 
crazy, I know. Anyways, this is a really damn fine match. It's actually better than their Raw match. It's actually better than their, um, I think it was It's Time from 1996. I think it was called that. Uh, maybe. Uh, better match than that. A pretty good match. What I liked about this match, however, was Steve Austin actually came out to help Bret Hart win the WWF title because he knew that he was going to get a shot at Bret Hart. He had a match guaranteed against Bret Hart at WrestleMania. So he, he knew that if Bret Hart won the title, he had an opportunity for the title as well. So here you have Undertaker helping Sid, his enemy at WrestleMania, his opponent, helping him win the match. Helping him to keep the title. You have Steve Austin helping Bret Hart to keep the title at WrestleMania. And I really like that. You know, I really like that. You know, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense for two opponents, for having one opponent trying to screw over his opponent at a major pay-per-view and have him lose his title. It doesn't make, like when Chris Jericho came out at uh, Fastlane to distract Kevin Owens and made him lose the Universal title. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, he was guaranteed a Universal title match, for God's sake. Why would you fuck that up? But anyways, this is a good ending. But he gets better. It's better. So then, the cage match is over. Psycho Sid beats Bret Hart. And this is where an ordinary episode of Raw becomes a very special and memorable episode of Raw. It's the closing 25, it's the, it's the closing minutes. You have Bret Hart in the middle of the ring, and they're, they're, they're actually still taking down the steel cage. Because the steel cage didn't, wasn't lowered, they, it was in pieces. It still had the big blue squared barred, blue barred steel cage, and they're still taking it down. So Vince McMahon gets in the ring with Bret Hart, and Bret Hart has the one of the best, finest segments of his life as he shoves Vince McMahon down and says, Frustrated isn't the goddamn word for it. This is bullshit. Everybody in the goddamn locker room knows that I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. If you don't like it, tough shit. Shawn Michaels has screwed me. Stone Cold has screwed me. The Undertaker has screwed me. Everybody in that goddamn locker room has screwed me over. And there's not a goddamn thing that you have been doing about it. This is bullshit. They basically says stuff like that. A lot much more frustrating than that. And a lot more anger. Bret Hart slowly turning heel. Steve Austin saying, I try to come out there and help you, but all you do is cry and bitch and moan. Your pathetic, Sid Vicious, come, or Psycho Sid, rather, comes out. And then they get to a fist of cuffs. And then Undertaker comes out, fist of cuffs. Suicide died from Brett on Undertaker. Out comes Austin and beats the shit out of Undertaker. And then beats the shit out of Brett. And then fucking, so you had Sid beating up Brett. And then Brett beating up Undertaker. And then Austin beats up Undertaker, who then beats up Brett Hart. And then uh, Austin and Brett beat each other up. And then, Oz, and then Taker beats the shit out of uh, Sid. So you have Taker and Sid beating each other up in the inside of the ring. And you have Austin and Bret Hart beating the shit out of each other on the outside. And that's basically the way it closes. Oh, and then and then Shawn Michaels comes out to try to enforce the law here. He says that he has found his smile. That he that it came that it, he found it. At his home, it what where he left it in San Antonio, and he will be at WrestleMania 13 to do something, but we don't know. He says that he's going to be involved in the main event, so that's basically the end. So you have Brett and Sid going at it in a cage. Bret Hart saying, "Frustrated isn't the goddamn word for it. This is bullshit. Bullshit." And then you have the big ass brawling at the end. A spectacular way to end Raw. You know, it's one of those times where it's an ordinary episode of Raw. You know, you ever get those, you know, there's lots of episodes of Raw where it's just an ordinary Raw and then it's the last, like, half hour that really makes it special. 
you have a really awesome ending. And that's what everybody remembers. It's like the last, it's like when uh, you had CM Punk and John Cena and then out came the Nexus. That episode of Raw was terrible. You had like uh, the pipe bomb and that episode of Raw was terrible. But everybody remembers the last moments. You know, like TLC 4. That Raw was pretty bad. There were so many, so many Raws like this where like the first, like the first 90 minutes of Raw it's just boring as hell. But it's the last 30 minutes. It's like the last 20 where it becomes a special episode of Raw. And everybody remembers the ending. This was a great way to close Raw and a great way to head into WrestleMania 13. It's just too damn bad WrestleMania 13 couldn't even sell out the Rosemont Horizon. It ends up being the only WrestleMania to not have a sellout. As I said in Uncensored, it only drew. 0.77 buy rate. It didn't even beat uncensored. So this is an ordinary Raw with a special ending that makes it a good episode of Raw. Overall, I give it a B. Episode of, uh, a rating of a B. Uh, as far as go home episodes of Raw for WrestleManias go, uh, I'd probably put it in the. I'd probably put it somewhere in the middle though. Nothing's gonna top the go home. Simulcast Raw for us, man, X7. I'm Dana Rock 08, and next time around for 1997 Year in Review, the very next video is going to be ECW Barely Legal. I finally get to talk about ECWs and their very first pay per view. For the WWF, I talk about In Your House. A cold, no wait, actually, it's Revenge of the Taker. And for WCW, it will be Spring Stampede. All here with me, Daniel Rod 08, in 1997, year in review. Goodbye.